All right, so what I'm going to do now is, since this chassis uh, is, is from Taylor at Amplify Nation, he did a small run of, of JM SIG chassis uh, for the do-it-yourself crowd, which is super cool. Um, I'm not using his boards that he supplied because I'm designing my own, obviously. And uh, here is my one-for-one -one printouts, so one-for-one -one scale. And then I just sort of found where I'd like these boards to lay out. Uh, and then I'm using these punches. Uh, this is Mayhew. Uh, where does it say it? Yeah, there you go. Mayhew USA. Um, setting up where my standoffs will be. And then I put it on the floor like this. I use a carpeted underneath. Um, actually, this is my little work area. So I set up the punch. And then I use, in this case, you don't need much because it's aluminum. But I'm using my little pry bar here just to give it a blunt force. I probably should use my hammer, but I don't really know where it is right now. Um, and then I go out on each corner. And then I'm drilling using a 11 64ths drill bit here uh, to make the holes. I may make them a little bit bigger just because I'm doing this by hand. It's not exactly perfect like a, like a CNC machine would do. Um, so I don't really want to stress the boards if the standoffs aren't exactly perfect. So perfect. I'm good. So I'm going to probably use on the chassis, maybe a little bit bigger, depending once the boards come in and I do a test fit to see, uh, before I get too much further into populating everything here, because when I do start drilling, it does make a mess. And what I don't want is for some random piece of metal like this. Um, sitting in like a tube socket or floating around in here. So I am going to be a little bit more patient and wait for those boards to come in uh, before I finalize everything. But this is very exciting to get going on this project. All right, so for this next part, I'm going to take... Basically, when you get your bus bar, you're going to get something all twisted up like this. And you, what you really want is to have a nice wire like this. And I don't know about you, but I always check out an amp. One of the first things my eye is drawn to is how straight is their bus wire. And believe it or not, I took a roll like this and turned it into this. So I'm going to show you real quick. Here's what I do. I know there's a few different methods to it, but you're going to notice this 2x4 sitting right here. And what I did was I drew, drilled a hole in there. And it goes all the way through. So after I cut, I, find, I figure out my length and I give myself a lot of extra. You can see here that I got plenty, maybe even double from what I need. Because the ends are going to be crimped a little bit based on what I'm going to show you next. So after I sort of unwind the wire from the bag as best as I can, I take my needle nose pliers... And I grab one end. Uh, come on. I thread it through. It's going to be tough at first because you want the whole diameter to be just, um, a, you know, just big enough for the wire to come through. And then I grab the other side. Now, it's going to be really hard for me to show this. But what I do with this 2x4 is it goes all the way to the ground and I lock it and it's kind of... Weird, but I lock it between my legs, which is hard to do with on camera. And then after that, I go back and forth. It can go pretty hard. And then I'll even bend it down like this. And then because that's going to work the kinks out. So I can do this but with one hand. So if I bend it down like this, it'll work the kinks out. And then I go in all the direct directions, just kind of going back and forth. Oh, shit. Um... And I'm going to have to fix this one. But you see, like, even just a simple pass through this 2x4, and it's already straightened it out pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead off camera here and then um, do my best. You can see even at this angle. Just be sure not to. And it is best to use the pliers. But it is really hard for me to do this demonstration while on camera. But yeah, just go back and forth, and then eventually, let's see, maybe even now, just gonna run it through. You're going to get a wire. It may be curly, but then you straighten it a little bit, 
There's no kinks. Pro tip. Making some decent progress here. Uh, one of the benefits of doing your power supply first is that on the back, you get some really awesome leads. And those leads are nice and stiff and they're perfect for uh, basically grounding the parts that need to be grounded. Um, what I like to do is, besides keep things vertical, obviously they're not tied down, but after I made my bus bar, I start over here and then I, you know, curl this, I put the other end in place uh, here, kind of loosely cut to sort of length. Um, and then I just start working down the line and making these little grounding loops using the leads from the power supply capacitors, which are pretty thick. Um, and they, I like to bend them outwards up and then I give it a little kink at the top. You can see, so they're not touching the body at all, um, because that would make a theoretical ground loop. And then I just kind of work the way down. Try to keep everything, for for my sort of standards, is I like to keep everything as straight as I can. See down here, it kind of curls up, but I don't have this tightened down yet. If you did tighten this down, uh, basically what I've found is that it creates a really efficient heat sink, and it takes forever to heat that up. So I like to crank that down at the very last, uh, once I'm done using that bus bar. So then... Um, yeah, just kind of work my way through and everything on the diagram. Uh, right now I'm just using an old diagram here uh, to look at where all the bus wires should go. Um, and then, yeah, then I just kind of keep on moving on. I did put my resistor here. This is like the base um, floor management resistor. Uh, it sort of gives the dial a certain... You know, when you you can't really drop all the base off, uh, there's going to be a little bit base left over. That's what that resistor is for. Um, yeah, and then I'll just keep on moving on.